Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Rachel. And again, thanks for everyone for joining. So today we're going to go over how to create tool paths inside of Fusion 360. So I'm assuming at this point, most folks already know me. So Dan Bonnick worked in the education group and doing this for a really long time, published author. But again, what I really care about in the chat window, do you have any CAM experience? So it could be, you know, Fusion, of course, or others. There's like HSM, SolidWorks has one. Does anyone have any CAM experience? And if no, you're in a, you're in a good place because we're going to assume no experience. Okay. And I'm assuming that's probably no for most people here. All right. So the agenda that I put together here is we're going to take the phone stand amplifier that we modeled last week, and we're going to create tool paths. So of course, I have the finished one in my hand, so I see and see this one. And today, we're actually just going to work on the base. Now, this is all based on just a little desktop CNC that I have. So as you can see, it's really small. So a lot of the dimensions we're going to use are the ones that I used for this little machine. So if you go, or go on a bigger Haas machine at some point, so of course your numbers are gonna be way different than these, but this is a great place to start. So I just wanna give a little intro on why things are gonna be small. And of course, everybody at this point should know how to get the Autodesk software, autodesk.com slash education, create your account, confirm your eligibility, and then you can download Fusion. All right. And again, we went through this, remember Fusion end-to-end -end platform, anything that you need to do from design all the way through manufacturing that we're gonna cover today. And of course, everything's in the cloud. So I did put a few slides here, just introducing the topic of CAM and CNC. Cause I, again, didn't wanna make an assumption, but just in case no one had any experience here, I always think it's good to do a level set on what the technology is referring to. So CAM is computer-aided manufacturing, right? Some people will also refer to it as subtractive manufacturing, where we're taking raw material and we're removing material. Think about like whittling, like wood away. And then of course, we're gonna develop the tool paths and then we're gonna take that tool path out to a CNC machine. So a CNC machine is computer numeric control so instead of manually taking a mill and moving it X, Y, and Z, we're basically running the X, Y, Z through the CNC machine. So as I mentioned before, you know, what are we doing here, right? We're really removing material. And again, that can be metals, it could be wood, as you see that I had in my hand, you know, different plastics. And of course, pretty much every industry uses CNC machines these days. And as I mentioned the other day, so I'm kind of assuming a lot of you are going to become you know, mechanical engineers, manufacturing engineers, not necessarily machinists, right? However, you know, having a good understanding of the machining process will make you a better designer and engineer. You won't design things that can't be manufactured, well, without a high cost. Pretty much everything could be made if you have enough money. So again, two different types for our machines that we have. So we have milling on the left-hand side and that's what we're gonna be spending our time today. But you can also do turning. So if anyone took wood shop in high school and you were working on the lathe, that would be the same as churning. So you can see in the video here, right? Where we have our stock material and the end mill is going inside there and removing the material. And that's what we're gonna be doing today is we're actually gonna be creating that tool path where the machine's gonna basically be moving in X, Y, and Z. And again, just for your reference, there's a whole bunch of different machines out there from vertical mills, horizontal, five axes, water jet mills, lays, rotors, and all of those basically are different types of CNC machines. So if someone uses one of these terms, it's just a type of CNC. And then of course there are different mills that you can use. So 
in today's lesson, we're actually just going to be using an end mill that has a flat bottom. But as you can see, there are tapers, there's ball nose, dovetail, T-slots. And then, of course, on the turning side, there's different tools as well. And then the process that we're going to run through inside of Fusion 360 is we're going to create the model. So we already did that. So I have a start file that we're all going to open. So if you weren't able to attend last week's presentation when we designed it, you're going to be fine. Then we're going to create a setup, basically defining the stock, putting our origin, and then we're going to create our tool paths. And that's where we're going to spend the majority of our time today. And then I'm also going to show you how we can simulate that tool path. And basically what we're looking for here, are there any crashes? Of course, we don't want to be breaking a $10,000 end mill anytime soon. And then we'll send the code out to the CNC machine. So for an, an analogy, think what we're doing here is we're going to be working in like Microsoft Word, we're typing things in, but how do we go from Microsoft Word to your printer? That's usually a printer driver is installed. That's the same thing here that happens when we output our, our post file. All right, so now that's the introduction. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna walk through this together. So hopefully everyone has Fusion 360 installed. And let me move some of this over. And again, feel free to enter any questions in the chat or unmute yourself. Again, we have a pretty small group. So hopefully, again, everyone has Fusion installed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go under the file menu, and then we're gonna click on open, file open. And again, I'll pause here and make sure everyone's good, file open. And then on the left-hand side, scroll all the way down and you're gonna see workshops and events. So double click on workshops and events. Then in the middle section, click on education. So we're gonna go to the education folder and then CAM. Double click on the CAM folder and then the file that we want is the second from the bottom, phone stand amplifier, amplifier dash cam. So again, I'll just leave this up on the screen. So I'll her out if you'd like me to do that again. And when the file is open, it should look like my screen. Anyone have questions? Can you do that one more time? Absolutely. So this is going to be the hardest thing we're going to do today, by the way. So from the file menu, click on open. And what we're going to do is we're really going out to our samples projects. So we're going to scroll all the way down on the left hand side until you see the samples area. Then we're gonna go under workshops and events. So double click on workshops and events. And then double click on the education folder in the middle. And then double click on cam. And the file is gonna be the phone stand amplifier. And I'm going to put this in the chat window as well. Maybe that'll help. So in the chat window is the path. All right. So then your file will open like so. Okay. Now, as we talked about is, you know, Fusion is an end-to-end -end platform, you know, and how do we switch our tool set is we're going to go under the design dropdown. And we're going to change the workspace to manufacture. So design, drop down, manufacture. And our tool set's going to change. So again, we'll let everyone get caught up here. Is everybody there? And in the chat, we're good. 
And we can also use the reactions maybe. Bring that open as well. All right, so a bunch of plus signs. Okay, I think we are good to go. Now, next thing we want to do here is on the left-hand side where it says bottom setup, you'll notice that I already have toolpath. So with this sample file, you can always refer back to, you know, what did I do? So we're going to create this from scratch. But I think it's a good idea to just watch and see what we're going to do. So again, just put your cursor, your fingers off your mice, your cursor, leave them all alone here for a second. And I'm just going to simulate this. And again, this is something that we're all going to learn how to do here in a little bit. But just real quickly, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a facing toolpath. And then we're what's referred to as a roughing toolpath. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna remove a lot of material very quickly, but as the name implies, it's gonna be pretty rough. And I'm gonna increase the speed just a little bit. And then we come back and we'll learn how to do a finishing toolpath, make it nice and smooth. And then we're gonna do a contour to remove the outside material. And of course, green, that's actually the part that we modeled up. So that is what we are going to do. So let me close this. And I'm just gonna switch screens here for a second. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new setup. So again, what I wanna do is walk everybody through this step-by-step. Step. So from the manufacturer, Workspace, we're going to go under the setup menu and click on setup. And with that, let me start up my little zoom it tool. So everybody can see. So from the setup menu, click on setup. And we're just going to walk through this step by step. So first off, there's a couple of things that have been displayed on the screen. You'll notice a rectangle appears and that's our stock material. So that's what we're gonna be removing the material from. As you can see at this point, it's way too small, but we also see our X, Y, and Z arrows with an origin. So this is gonna be where, if you were to actually take this out and see and see it, this is where you zero, zero, zero your tools. So I'm gonna click on the origin and that, you know, let me again, zoom up. So I'm gonna click on the origin, which is gonna be the white dot. And then I'm gonna move that to my upper left-hand corner of the stack. So again, click and then click the top left corner. We'll move it right there. So again, when I would take this into my CNC machine, that's gonna be the point that I'm gonna zero my tools on. So that'll be the first thing we're gonna do. Now with that set, the next thing we're gonna do, and I'm just looking at the chat, see if there's anything in there. Thumbs up if you guys are ready to go. Okay, thank you. All right, now the next thing we need to do is the stack. As you can see, again, it's way too small. So in the setup dialog box, we're gonna click on the stock tab. So that's gonna be the second one right here. We're gonna make that active. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here for the very top where it says mode, and we're gonna change this to fixed size box. Now this would be the size of material that you're going to be cutting from. So now we're going to make some adjustments here. And here, let me go to the top view so you can see this. So currently the box size for the stock is 100% accurate to the size of the part. And that's usually what we don't want, right? Because we want to remove some material to make it nice and smooth. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to change the X to 3.75. And 
and I'm going to change the Y to two and a quarter. And you can see once I do that, I now have a little bit of material going around the part so I can remove that. I'm going to switch my viewpoint here to look at it from the front view. And I'm going to change the Z from one inch to 0.77. Now you're probably wondering why 0.77? Well, that just happened to be the thickness of the piece of wood that I milled this out of. So it was like a, a one by seven board that I had. And just that was happens to be the, the thickness when I measured it. But you can see on the screen that the component is centered inside of this. Well, I'm not going to flip this part around. So I'm going to change the model setting at the bottom bottom Z, and I'm going to expand the dialog box here so you can see that, with an offset of zero. Now let me zoom up on this and I'll highlight what I changed. So fixed box size, and then I changed the X to three and a quarter, or three and three quarters, depth to two and a quarter, changed the model position to model bottom negative Z with an offset of zero. So if you go ahead and make those changes. And then give me a thumbs up when you're done with that. All right, thank you. All right, so now go ahead and click OK, because you can see from the preview here, it took the remaining stock material and it moved it up to the top. And that's gonna be the area that we're gonna remove first. All right, then you can switch to your isometric view, your home view, right above the view cube to the top left. You can see the home icon, just click on that and that'll take you back to your predefined isometric view. And the good news is we now have our setup. And again, you can come back here and you can click on that setup three and give it a new name like I did, if you would like. So I'm gonna change this maybe to, to base, base setup. Not mandatory, but again, makes it a little bit easier, right? And obviously you can see the other setup that I did here for the top setup. So that was the, the top portion that was gonna actually hold the phone in. All right, now that we have the setup done, the first thing we're gonna do next, or the next thing we're gonna do, is we're gonna create a facing toolpath. And again, a facing toolpath is gonna come back in and it's gonna make the plane nice and flat. Now, I am gonna make a minor change to what I had in the previous model. After looking at that, I think I was doing maybe a little too much toolpath there because I only need to face off this top portion currently. So how I'm going to do this, we're going to go under the 2D menu. And the first tool on the left hand side is going to be face. So this is going to be a facing operation, make that nice and flat. So go ahead and click on the face tool. Again, I'll pause here for a second so everyone should have the face dialog box open. Now, we're just gonna work our way left to right. So the first tool here, or the first tab is called tool. So go ahead and click on that. And Fusion 360 remembers the last tool that you were working on. Well, in this case, the last one I was doing was a ball end mill but that is not what I want here. So we're gonna to need to change the tool. So here where it says tool, click on select. And then at the top of the screen, we're gonna use this end mill right up at the top. So it's my number 10, it's a quarter inch shank, seven eighths long. And you will notice something that I did change here. I just want to point out. So you'll notice 0.237 is for the 
or the diameter is not correct, right, for quarter inch. The reason that I put that a little bit smaller, when I, when I measured the diameter of my actual tool, it measured at 0.237. So if I would have left that at a quarter of an inch, my parts would have been off. So that is why the diameter in, in my case is 0.237. That's why you always measure your tools. All right, so now make the number 10 end mill, flat end mill active. Go ahead, click on select. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the geometry tab. And the only difference that we're gonna do here is select the top edge, one of the edges on that top planar face. That is really the only area that I need to face end mill. And I need to fix that in, my, in the sample file, but this is absolutely the better way to do it. And then click on the Heights tab. And I'm just gonna explain this real quick. So if I look at this from the front view, so when we're creating tool paths, we need to define, you know, where's the tool gonna to start cutting, you know, and what are the different heights where it can, you know, start rapid feeds and retract. And that's what we're doing up here. Now, usually when I'm doing this is I work one off the other. And what I mean by that, so we have the top height is set to the stock. So that's correct here. And then this next one for the feed height, it says top height. Well, that is referencing to the top height right here. I'm gonna go up just a little bit higher. I'm just gonna do 0.1. And then I'm gonna change the next one here from stock top to feed height and retract height. I'm just gonna change all these values to 0.1. And I'll, again, I'll zoom up on this so everybody can see it. So again, the feed height, I'm gonna change this to top height. So this is gonna reference that. And then the retract height is the feed height. And that's gonna, oops, that's gonna reference, oops get my fingers to work right. That's gonna reference that. And then the retract height. is gonna re reference this. And again, for you know what we're doing right now, this isn't gonna you know make a big difference, but again, you start to see and see this machine, we need to know where you know the safe height is, where the tool can start moving quickly and not hit anything. So for now, go ahead, click OK. And I'm gonna go back to my isometric view, my home view. And let me just pause here for a second. Does everyone's screen look similar to mine? Thumbs up. Anyone want me to do that again? Mine has a green block. So you have a green block after you exit. Can one of you share your screen? Would one of you be? I'm not sure what the green block is. Uh, sure, is it fine if I share mine? Yeah. I think that'll that'll help. So thanks for Garth as host. You'll probably have to grant him access. There we go. Is it showing? Yep, yep you're good. Never mind. Okay. I mean, if you can see this, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. So let's edit the tool, and in the up in the browser on the left hand side, you see where it says T10 face tool. Yep down up, all the way to the bottom, base two, right click, edit. At the very top, let's see what we got. Okay, so that looks good. Go to the geometry tab for me, if you would. 
Okay, so that looks good. Heights. So we got stop top, top height, feed height, retract height. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, go to the passes tab, which will be the next one. Was that looks good? Multiple depths. Okay. Go to the last one, the linking. Huh, that all looks good. So go ahead and click OK. I'm curious. Um, yeah. At the top of your screen, go under Utilities, the Utilities tab. On the far left-hand side, turn that off just for a second. I'm uh, guessing, yeah, just click on it. It'll turn that off. It's showing where the stock is. Um, that did not seem to change it. It, it will in, in a second here. Uh, no. So go back to the milling tab. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna simulate this. So uh, right click on face two in the browser and everyone can do this by the way, and then click on simulate. Click play, yep. And we can see that. And we're gonna make some adjustments here, but go ahead and just close that now and the green should go away. Sorry, how do I close the uh, simulation? The, dialog the simulate dialog box, the right hand side. Oh, sorry. The Yep, click close. Just zoom the screens over that. Okay. All right. So if you could stop your share, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make my settings match everyone else's. All right. So again, so since we just turned yours off, go back and turn that back on. So the automatic process stock. When the tool paths are generated, it will automatically show you, you know, what area is being removed. And that's what that is. But then as soon as you left click on the outside of it, it should go away. So it'll temporarily show you, you know, what the model is versus the stack, basically is what that's doing. Does anyone else want me to do that again? Or are we fine with that? So if not, let's simulate this again. So again, we're gonna right click on phase two, simulate. And there are some settings that I changed here. And so let me zoom up on these. So for the tool, I made that transparent. And then I turned on stock. And I change the mode to tail. So what that simply means is, of course, when you get a really complex part, you're going to have some you know, detailed toolpath going back on, and this will only show you know the last portion of that toolpath, hence the the tail side. And then the other setting down at the bottom, my fingers to work right here is I changed this colorization to comparison. And I adjusted the accuracy just a, a little bit, run a little bit faster. So the blue now is gonna be your stock and the green is the part. So now when you play this, of course that went pretty fast. Let me slow that down. So when you play it, you can see just the tail and now just the green part is I know, so that's the top of my part. How's everybody doing? Couple thumbs up. 
All right. So congratulations. That was your first tool path. So let's go ahead and close out the simulate dialog box. And again, you can just left click out in a blank area. We'll clear that the process that we looked at before that was turned on. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a roughing toolpath. And again, roughing is we want to remove a lot of material, but when we're done with the toolpath, there's still going to be some stock left. So how we are going to do that is I'm going to go back to the milling tab, and then we're going to come up here and let me zoom up on here. So again, make sure that the milling tab is now active. And from the 2D menu, we're gonna click on 2D Adaptive. So again, Adaptive is a roughing clear, is a roughing tool path, and it maintains a constant load on the tool, which is gonna prevent wear. So that's a great strategy for removing a lot of material. All right, so the good news is the tool, again, Fusion is going to remember the last tool that we did. So it's going to remember this, the number 10 tool. So we're good there. Now click on geometry on the geometry tab. And then there's going to be three areas that we want to remove material. We're going to pick on that top middle horizontal plane, the bottom middle horizontal plane, and the top right middle horizontal plane are going to be the three planes. So again, I'll let everybody pick your three planes. So now the other setting that we want to set, let me zoom up on this. So under the geometry tab, we also want to check the option here for stock contour. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure this option is checked. And that's basically telling Fusion 360 on, you know, again, where's that stock material stay within these boundaries. So again, make sure stock contours is selected. Again, you can see the yellow line representing the boundary of the stock. Then the same thing with the heights. So again, we got the stock top, so that's going to be fine. And then I'm going to change the retract height to be top height. And then the clearance height is going to be the retract. So again, let me zoom up on this so everyone can see. So the bottom, this is our selected contour, so that should have automatically been selected because that's what we just did with our picking of our three faces. And then the top height is the stock top. So that'll be good. That's where we're gonna start cutting. And then the retract height is equal to the top height. And equal to that. And then our retract height again is equal to this. And for now, go ahead and click OK. And let's simulate our tool pass. So here's how we can do this. I'm going to right click on our setup that we just did and click on simulate. And that will play both tool pass. This by default, and I'll show you a little shortcut here in a second, but right click simulate and play it. Again, it'll start off doing our facing operation. And then it's gonna start removing the material with the adaptive tool path. And so as you're you know, learning a little bit more about CNC and CAM, Go ahead and click OK and see what it looks like. And then we can come back and easily make some edits to this. 
All right. So as this is playing, does anyone see potential issue with this roughing toolpath? Anyone see any issues? Put something in the chat or unmute yourself. No one? So if this is a roughing toolpath, you can see the part is in green. So that is telling me that I'm not leaving any material to come back and do a finishing toolpath. So that's the first thing that I saw. So we want to go back and make some edits to this. So go ahead and close out the simulate dialog box. And we're going to edit the adaptive toolpath. So as I mentioned, you can either you know, simply right click and click on edit on that toolpath, or you can double click on the icon. So if you double click on the icon, we'll also edit that toolpath. And then we're going to go under the passes tab. And we're going to make some changes here. So the first change that we're going to make here is stock to leave at the bottom. And I'm going to change this maybe to 30 thousandths of an inch on both sides. And I think for now, that should be really all that we need. Go ahead and click OK. And again, let me zoom back up so everyone can see it. All I did is I turned on stock to leave. And I'm saying leave 30 thousandths of an inch on both the radial and axial, basically the horizontal planes and the vertical planes going around it. And go ahead and click OK. Now watch my screen for just one second. So as you start to simulate these tool paths, right? In this model, we're only gonna have what, four different tool paths, so not that big of a deal. But if you get components, you know, that have, you know, 20 different tool paths on there, watching all of them play together can be time consuming. So I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna right click on the base, set up, simulate, but if you click on the adaptive toolpath in the browser, it'll go directly to that. So now when I click on play, I'm just gonna do, or just simulate the roughing toolpath. And again, we're gonna make it a little bit faster just based on time. But you can see the big difference here is I left 30 thousandths again on the horizontal planes and the vertical planes. Does everyone's screen look similar to mine? Thumbs up if you guys are good. Okay. Perfect. So when you're done with that, Go ahead and close out the simulate dialog box. And then the next toolpath that we're going to create is we're going to do a finishing toolpath. Now, there is a, a way here that we can reduce our work. And that's basically by using the operation for deriving a toolpath. So if everyone, again, just watches my screen for a second, then you can do this. So I'm gonna right click on my adaptive toolpath, right click, then right in the middle of the dialog box, create drive operation, milling, 2D pocket. And let me zoom up on this. So go ahead and do this. We're gonna go right click on our adaptive toolpath, create derived, then 2D milling and 2D pocket. So what this is going to do, it's basically going to use pretty, main, pretty much all of the selections that we did for the adaptive. And again, the advantage reducing our workload, which is a good thing. And again, I get to do it again. 
with the zoom it. So 2D milling pocket. So again, the tool that's set. If you click on the geometry tab, it remembers those settings that we had. So that was good. If we click under the heights tab, let's just make sure. So we have stock top. And I'm actually going to make a change here. So in the last operation, we removed a lot of material from the top. So I'm going to change this top height to model top. So remember the stock top, you know, that's where we flattened it out at the top. And that's where we also removed it in the roughing operation. So by changing that to model top, we're not cutting air, which is a good thing. And then the feet height, again, that's set correctly here to top height, and then retract height. This needs to change to feed height. Again, let me zoom up on these changes that I made. So retract height should be good, but I'm sorry, the clearance height should be set, but the retract needs to be changed to feed height. Again, we want that reference to this guy right here. Right, and then under the passes tab, the only thing that I'm probably gonna change here would be the maximum step over. And again, so this is a toolpath basically, you know, going back and forth, you know, how far should that distance go? And usually, you know, you probably want that maybe a little less than 50% of the tool. So what if we did 0.1? So of course, one eighth, 0.125 would be half. So a little less than that will give me a nice finish on our toolpath here. So 0.1 for the maximum step over. And then go ahead and click OK. And everyone watches my screen. Everyone's going to see what I did incorrectly. So let me play this. You'll notice everything is still blue. Let me edit that toolpath. Again, this is why we simulate these, right? So back under the passes tab, you'll notice I still have this option checked right here, stock to leave. This needs to get unchecked because this is a finishing toolpath. So stock to leave, unchecked. Go ahead, click OK. And now when I simulate that, so again, right click on the setup, simulate, click on pocket, play that. And that looks much better. All right, how's everybody doing? Maybe a thumbs up when you are got your 2D pocket toolpath adjusted. You guys are doing great. All right, so we have about 10 minutes and we have one toolpath to go. So we're in good shape. So again, we can do the same thing that we did before is we can derive out our last toolpath by doing, again, the derived operation, but this time we're gonna drive it off the pocket and we'll change this to contour. And again, I'll set this up and I'll take a zoom so you guys can see what I'm gonna do. So again, right click on the 2D pocket Create derived milling 2D contour. 
And a 2D contour tool path, basically we're gonna go around the outside of the part, the edge, to give us our outside boundary. All right, so let's just go left to right. So again, the tool, everything is set fine there. Under the geometry tab, this is where we need to make some changes. So th this is already been cut, so I don't need that. So the easiest way inside of Fusion to remove material, I'm sorry, remove our selections, is click on the X where it's telling you how many edges or faces are already selected. So that X will clear everything. And then we're gonna select the bottom edge. So it doesn't matter you know, if you pick on the bottom horizontal or vertical line or one of the arcs, it's gonna pick up all of the edges on that bottom face. Again, we can take a quick look at the Heights tab or we track feed. So that all looks good. Go ahead, click OK. And it's showing that the tool is going to go around a part, which is good. But let me pause here for a second, and then I'm going to tell you what the concern is. So go ahead and, and apply the 2D contour. And if anyone needs, I'm happy to do that again. So Graham, can you clarify your question too close to final dimensions? I'm not sure exactly what that means. Did we just change the edges only? So in the dialog box for the contour, we're basically telling Fusion, you know, where the tool should be cutting, right? What material? So by clicking on that edge, yeah, it's going to go, you know, one hundred percent and touch that the faces here. So it should be dimensionally accurate. Oh, okay, got it. So now here's the concern. So with this tool path, it's gonna be plunging down and then it's gonna be cutting the material all at once. And that's a lot of material for this to cut. So I'm gonna edit that contour and the only thing I'm going to change, I'm going to go to the linking tab. So the tab on the far right hand side. And I'm going to click on ramp. And I'm going to change the distance here to an eighth of an inch. Again, let me zoom up on this. So on, this is the linking tab, far right hand tab. I check ramp. And I'm going to change the ramp step down to an eighth of an inch. So what that simply means is we're going to ramp down at two degrees at an eighth of an inch thick, and then we're going to keep on ramping down in eighth inch increments. And let me show you what that toolpath looks like now. So now again, let me simulate this contour. Slow that down just a little bit. So that's going to give me a really nice base at the very end. Because again, we're only removing the small amount of material at a time. And that's going to be ideal here for the contour. So of course, you know, as we're going through there, so there's a lot of settings, you know, that we just didn't talk about here. You know, so for example, under the tool, 
you know, the speeds and feeds critically important, right? So as you, you know, want to start getting on a machine, you'll be working with the shop manager, supervisor, right? And they'll have a lot of this information based on the machine that you're going to be using, you know, and again, there's a bunch of different settings here under the passes to control, you know, do I want to do a roughing tool path? You know, again, the stock to leave, smoothing, you know, what's that finish rate going to be? So again, lots of different options here that we didn't check. But my goal here by, you know, just going through and introducing CAM to everybody inside of Fusion is that this isn't something that we should be scared about. It can be exciting, right? And then again, the nice part, as I mentioned at the introduction, the more you know about CNC CAM, the better designer you're gonna be, right? So for example, should I go back and fill it each one of these edges around the top? Well, if we do that, now I'm starting to think about from a machining perspective, how would I machine that, right? Do I have undercuts? Again, manufacturing process, critically important, right? It's easy to design something, but the real truth is, can it be made you know, with the tooling that you have available to the shop? All right, how's everybody doing? Because we only have one last thing to do, and that is to create our post file. Is everybody ready for the big finish here? All right, so now that we have our tool pass created and we simulated everything looks good, we're going to output a post file. And again, this is the file that you would send over to the CNC machine. So from the actions menu, you can click on post process. And this is also referred to as G code, hence the G1 and G2. So post process, and of course I need to pick one of the setups here. And then in the dialog box, mine is set to gerbil or garbled, depends how you want to say it. But that's the post process that the machine that I have understands. If you go to this drop down list, you can see posts for many different machines. Again, think of this as like the printer driver, you know, so when you're Microsoft Word, how do you, how does Word communicate with your specific printer? It's using a driver. That's exactly what this post is doing. And then there are some additional settings here that you could change. And then when you're all done, just go ahead and click on post. And let's call this base. And see. And let me show you what the G code looks like. So again, this is you know starting the spindle, starting the speed. Remember our face operation. So this, think of this as like X, Y, Z coordinates, and we're just telling the mill how to go back and forth. Then we have our adaptive tool paths. You can see a little bit more code involved there. A lot more code involved there. Then we have the pocket and then we have our contour. And down at the very end, we basically stop the spindle, you know, we raise we raise the spindle up, I should say, and then stop it. So that basically is the process that we go through. Again, there's a lot of different uh, tools that we obviously didn't cover here, but you know we have tools you know for 3D. So again, if something is not as planar as we have here, we have some really interesting tool paths. And I actually used some of these, by the way, for the top setup. If I switch my model visibility here, I'll show you what I created here. Minimize some of these other ones so we can see it. 
So again, this is that top. So I'm coming back in here and I'm doing the contour first. And then I came back in here and I did a flow. And that's gonna be the, the area where your finger would go, be able to get into like your home button, be able to see the bottom of the screen. So that is all that I had to present to you guys. And remember, you know, as we talked about in the other sessions, to start learning about a lot of these, go under the question mark, learning documentation, self-paced learning. So there's tutorials up here on everything that we covered. If you like YouTube, feel free to go out to YouTube. There's a Fusion 360 channel that has a lot. There's forums up here that you guys can ask questions. And of course, as I mentioned before, in the fall, we're going to plan on doing a whole bunch of other workshops. Again, we have some student ambassadors that'll be able to help everybody as well. And again, if you're on a student team and we'd like to get involved and see how Autodesk can help your team get to the next level as well. So with that, anyone else have any other questions?